Do you think disabling full screen optimizations improves your latency? What about reflex? What about low latency? We sync, G sync. What about wow settings? What about the input latency when you're actually in a gunfight? What about minus no reflex, Nvidia cap, in game cap? Well, today I will answer all your questions. Not only that, I actually have a setting that I can now recommend, which almost every one of you can use without a second thought. And very specific suggestions if you're really that kind of fine-tuned option for yourself. Let us start by the most important point I want to make. Your input latency is very dependent on your frame rate in CS2. So performance issues in gunfights will affect you severely. This is why I can't just run all the tests at 1000 FPS as it makes a whole lot of these tests useless. We must account for our frame times during intense scenarios. Next, we also have the problem of GPU bound scenarios. I have a 5070 Ti, so for me I never run into GPU bound scenarios in CS2 as I run my game at 1080p 240Hz. You do sometimes because CS2 is buggy especially when you start the game and sometimes Molotovs can make some of your pcs perform like a slideshow it happens on my laptop especially what about being cpu bound as cs2 is extremely cpu intensive i run a 7900 x3d it is a really good cpu but sadly cs2 is just a different breed when it comes to one person lows hop into a 5v5 and see how your one person lows crash just like face clan when you're in a gunfight or smokes or molotovs are flying around so the combination of a whole lot of these settings are also tested at low FPS like 64, 110. Another important thing is doing at least 500 samples of testing. This is because one simple bad timing of one input can make a setting look really good or bad when the sample size is really small. Here is the complete method I follow to measure the input latency. There is an Arduino Leonardo, it records a timestamp while logging the time at which the mouse one signal is sent. Then a luminance increase is detected at muzzle fire, creating another timestamp. Do this 500 times and this gives you a very reliable end-to-end -end input latency. This is free from any telemetry bugs that can arise from lack of markers, lack of jitter or due to high jitter. To prevent quantization errors, test did not have a fixed interval rate and a certain level of randomness was used. To prevent faulty readings, luminance levels were checked in different light conditions to make sure the threshold is only crossed by the muzzle fire and not some other light on the screen or in the room. Doing all of this took me quite a few days. So let us answer all of your input latency related questions now, right after the sponsor. Check out ECUS Voice Wave. The best AI yeah, voice software, believe me. Open your game. Go to audio settings and select ECUS. You can be anyone now. Yeah, AB's recording. Select audio input capture and select ECUS Voice Wave. Record it in any voice you like. They've got a 60% discount right now. Use code HOMNICE2025. Link is in the description. Let us start by finding the best setting to use with VSync and G-Sync. For all low latency mode settings, I used no reflex as the launch option. I kept my FPS to 237 via NVIDIA control panel to prevent VSync from kicking in. With LLM off, I had an average input latency of 13.0. With LLM on, I had an average input latency of 13.13. With LLM set to ultra, my FPS auto capped to 225 to 24, resulting in an input latency of 13.3. Setting FPS max to zero and reflex disabled results in additional latency as expected since VSync is always active. Enabling reflex drops your latency by more than 2 milliseconds and I'm not even GPU bound. When I use VSync and G-Sync, the best option is to enable reflex or set it to boost for the best input latency. You don't have to do any capping via NVIDIA control panel. Now moving on to what happens with FPS max zero and VSync turned off. Averaging 1100 FPS during this test, none of these settings make any change. If you can consistently put out 1100 FPS without being GPU bound, you really don't have to worry about any setting. Now, let's move on to reflex. We see the same trend following. Turns out when you're running your game at 1100 FPS, none of these settings really matter. So you have been sitting around the same input latency setting at reflex disabled, enabled and enabled plus boost. That is around 9.8. 
I did conduct this test quite a while ago to simulate GPU load, which is approximately about 98%. And I set everything to ultra 4K DSR uncapped and enabled and enabled plus boost did help. So it is a safe assumption that all of you should actually enable your reflex. Now, of course, you're not going to get 1100 FPS. In fact, during gunfights, high smoke, smaller tops, instances like this, your FPS can even drop below 100. Even if your average FPS doesn't drop, your real FPS will drop. So what happens in these situations? Well, I created a hypothetical scenario where your, let's say, FPS is set to 64. And over here, if you use reflex enable plus boost, reflex enable, reflex disables, you have an input latency of around 15. But if you use the no reflex launch option, along with the nvidia control panel cap at 64 you have almost twice the latency as that of any other setting now it doesn't matter if you set it to ultra on or off it doesn't make a difference your input latency is still going to be pretty high why not just test it at 110 again so at 110 i capped my fps with enabled and boost using fps max 110 reflex enabled 110 reflex disabled 110 and even no reflex but with an in-game cap at 110 and always sitting around 12 and 13 however no reflex again with an nvidia control panel cap gave me an additional latency almost 18.93 so as you're in a gunfight and your FPS is dropping, the setting which is going to give you the most input lag turns out to be with the launch option of no reflex and being bound by your NVIDIA control panel cap. So let's move on to the other test as well. Again, we disable reflex at 100 FPS, but now we are capping it using our NVIDIA control panel cap. So it is not just the NVCP cap that is affecting the latency. It has to be both the launch option and the NVIDIA control panel cap which is quite unique and strange because a lot of people tell me that they feel better with no reflex it feels much more smoother and it may be you know that may be the truth and i tried playing with it many times but i just feel so delayed and i've said this way before like maybe when this setting started getting launched or everybody started recommending them based on some bug reports where people saw false one percent low increase and stuff like that and uh, that was quite the straw fit but i don't really like it i just feel like it's delayed but you do yourself now coming to valve recommended settings and reflex uncapped over here we can see that the input latency rise is just one millisecond now the performance issue is completely different which i have to go in the next video because this video was just getting too large now everything i tested up till now has been 500 samples on windows 24 s2 and my ccd0 was used via process lasso and ccd1 was disabled via process lasso turns out if i just disable it via my motherboard and switching to windows 25 and now i'm conducting for 150 samples my input latency dropped by one millisecond across all my tests so now all the tests you're seeing are being done with these settings so that's why there is a one millisecond decrease so what happens with disable full screen optimization does it help your latency or not well not really both of these came out to be the same mesh i would say in fact with enabled you actually had better performance so the default version actually gave you 8.44 milliseconds of input latency whereas the disabled full screen optimization work which is supposed to decrease your latency gave you higher input latency does G-Sync on and G-Sync off affect your performance? No, it didn't affect my performance at all. It was almost the same within the margin of error. Nothing really changed. You can use G-Sync. It's really good when your FPS goes down. Now, by G-Sync, I mean FreeSync, FreeSync Premium, whatever you have, you can enable it. Any sort of variable refresh rate technology. Now, what happens in this kind of test? I also tried to test it with 150. So reflex enabled plus boost sitting at around FPS max 150 and then no reflex with NVCB cap of 150. So again, we see an increase in input latency. So I'm not really recommending if, if you guys like it, use it, but I cannot recommend it. The funny thing I find about all of this is that full screen, full screen windowed and windowed mode all have the same input latency. All these tests were conducted at 19, 20, 10, 80 P by the way and reflex was enabled and set to boost what about these two settings what if you turn them off well again they make no difference everything is within the margin of error 
All of these were tested in windowed mode 1920 by 1080 p and again no meaningful difference here everything here is in margin of error i suggest you just keep it on as default as set by windows especially if you're on windows 11. now coming to directx 11 and vulcan vulcan gives you 15.89 milliseconds of input latency and directx 11 gives you 8.44 milliseconds of input latency that's actually quite shocking the amount of difference you get with this now, I tried to find out whether the current CS2 version actually got better, maybe. No, it wasn't the case. So, turns out all the 1 millisecond input latency that actually improved came from either Windows 25 S2 or me disabling my CCD1 via my BIOS. Now, a simple bandit fix would be to run your game either at uncapped and just enable your reflex or put it to enable plus boost. This is the simplest way to play the game. Now, let's say if your GPU temperature increases quite a bit and you can suffer from thermal throttling, especially if you're on a laptop, I would suggest putting it to just enabled and not enabled plus boost because enabled plus boost forces your GPU clocks to be high, therefore increasing your GPU temperature, which will again cause thermal throttling. So setting it to enabled is a really good kind of easy fix. But if you're looking for that kind of low key perfection, you can see your GPU temperature see the rating of your gpu like what temperature does it start to thermal throttle and if you're safe within the margin of limits and you have appropriate kind of power consumption you should set it to enable plus boost and what if you want to play with vsync it is completely acceptable at least from an input latency point of view and you can play with it and no to not cap your fps 3 below the value 10 below the value 14 below the value use llm ultra that is not really going to give you better input latency this is actually going to give you worse input latency enabling reflex will give you better input latency now a lot of people will talk about how it affects the performance actually now there are a lot of bugs this is the reason this video was getting so so large like i'll show you a graph right over here and you'll feel like this is the perfect setting to run cs2 in but trust me, it's a bug. So I'll cover that in my future video. But if you're running VSync, please just enable Reflex. That's the best setting that I can watch for. Now, what if you have an AMD GPU? Sadly, I don't have an AMD GPU, so I did not test it. And so I cannot give you an opinion on it. You can take opinion from other internet people. But for me, like I have to watch for the tests I do. I know the quality of tests I do myself and only then i recommend them to you so i know for sure that these settings work they're right thank you for watching thank you for subscribing thank you to all my channel members and watch out for the future content i'm really sorry i make some delayed content i get quite a bit busy nowadays so take care and see you later